Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today I'll be getting straight to the point and I'll let you know whether or not CyberGhost is a usable VPN and also talk about some alternatives if you end up not really liking CyberGhost. But in my opinion, I think CyberGhost is surprisingly one of the most popular VPNs and one of the more reliable and consistent ones. In fact, especially if you're trying to, let's say, access streaming services or if you just want to, you know, game with your buddies and make sure that your ping is as low as it can be, you've got dedicated servers just for that for gaming for torrenting for streaming and even privacy and they even have an option where you can buy your own dedicated IP which nobody else will be able to use of course not just that, just like the other top VPNs like Express and Nord, they've been conducting independent audits. And the thing about independent audit reports is that they essentially demonstrate the VPN provider's confidence in their own product that they can have a third party audit firm essentially audit their servers and audit their privacy policy and make sure that they're upholding it to the highest standard. And so when a VPN company does that, it really just reinforces more and more trust. Now, you know, unlike Express and Nord, which have lots and lots of audits under their belt, CyberGhost is only at their second. But again, this is definitely a step in the right direction. And given that they're also based in Romania, it's definitely a plus because it's a country where they do not mandate the keeping of any logs. So. That's good stuff right there. Now, as far as the reliability and streaming, it's actually quite a bit reliable. I tested it for Hulu, Netflix. In fact, you can just look up Hulu here. Unlike any other VPN, this is the only VPN where I've seen this feature. You can just look up the streaming service itself and it'll give you the most optimized servers for that. So let's say I wanna watch Prime Video. I can just look up Prime and it'll give me all the Prime optimized servers, which is a really neat feature, honestly. So again, combining all of this, the fact that it works great for torrenting, gaming, privacy, streaming, and they're releasing their independent audit reports, which are resulting in great conclusions, in fact, meaning that they're not storing any information about their users, anything that can lead to a specific user or an IP address, and they're not selling it either. And combining all of that makes me kind of forgive the lack of features and the few things here and there that I don't like about CyberGhost. For example, I can't exactly use the fastest protocol, which is the WireGuard protocol with all the servers. Now, again, whenever you use a VPN, if you didn't know, it does slow down your speed. But with the WireGuard protocol, which is the next generation of protocols, essentially, it's very quick and it's very safe, but you need the servers to support that. And so with CyberGhost, sometimes I found myself connecting to a server and it just takes forever to connect and, you know, it ends up failing. So I end up kind of waiting for nothing. And that's just because I'm trying to use the WireGuard protocol. So if you don't want to have to go through that, I would just recommend going for the automatic selection because that will just recalibrate to the best protocol depending on the chosen server. But again, this is just one of the nitpicks that I might have on CyberGhost. I'm not really the biggest fan of that because I always like to use WireGuard and I prefer if the VPN just didn't slow down my connection. And although OpenVPN is great, it's just not as fast as WireGuard. Now here, of course, you have your DNS blockers and ad blockers and whatnot, and you have a kill switch, which will make sure that you're only gonna be connected to the internet while you're secured by the VPN, which is a great safety net, you could just say. Exceptions is kind of like split tunneling, and it's not exactly split tunneling. Split tunneling, for example, with Express, it'll allow you to choose which applications are routed through the VPN and which are not. So I can just say, hey, only allow the selected item or the selected application to use the VPN while the rest of my connection is routed outside the VPN tunnel. Or the other way around, I can make it happen any which way. But with smart rules here with CyberGhost, you can choose the website Websites, only the websites, not the applications, that you don't want to pass through the VPN tunnel while leaving the rest of your connection routed through the tunnel. So let's say I don't want my Netflix to get affected because I still want to watch my local Netflix, or if I don't want my bank account to be affected, let's say if I go to my bank's website to try to access my bank account, I probably don't want to have my IP address affected so that they don't think that somebody else is trying to access it from a different IP address, and I don't want my IP address to be, again, affected. So I can just 
just put my bank's URL right here and it'll exclude it. But this may not exactly be as useful as split tunneling. You do have app rules though, which I do like, and this will simply make CyberGhost launch as soon as you open up a specific application and you can even preset it to a selected server. So I made it so that whenever I access or whenever I open the Chrome browser, it'll automatically have CyberGhost connect to the American Netflix server with CyberGhost. So it can be useful in some situations. So would I recommend CyberGhost? I would say, yeah, absolutely. If you're looking for a budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost, and you don't care about, let's say, split tunneling or any of the extra bells and whistles that may come with a more premium VPN, then by all means, go with CyberGhost. You'll be able to secure up to seven devices per subscription which is not bad at all it's actually a little above the industry standard and you'll be able to stream and torrent and game and gain extra privacy with no spy servers and again despite the lack of features and bells and whistles and i would say also the early stage in auditing they're fairly behind nordvpn and expressvpn and surfshark by the way all of which I'll leave links to in the description down below in case you're interested in any of them, not just CyberGhost and including full reviews if you want to learn more about them. But overall, I would give CyberGhost probably around a 7.5 out of 10 as a VPN. It gets the job done. I would probably give it maybe up to an 8 just because it's reliable and it's good and it's consistent. But as far as features and the user interface overall, I think it can use a little bit of an update. The features are a little bit lacking. The auditing is also behind a lot of the other VPNs. So I can't exactly recommend it over something like Surfshark, for example, because Surfshark is just going to be the best budget VPN that's basically just a few cents more expensive than CyberGhost, but it offers a whole lot more. Like, for example, an unlimited number of devices can be secured with Surfshark. But that's just one of the differences, again, if you're looking for something that is as cheap as possible and it gets the job done very, very well, and you don't care about the lack of split tunneling or any of the other features, then CyberGhost would be a great option. So that'll be it for this video. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. And a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated to help us keep going here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.